it become it become a little emotional. It's it's a it's a little fucked up. Yeah. But I care for the guy. I care for no. all these fighters. No, yeah. no, no. It's not fucked up at all. It's the truth. <laughs> he said a bunch of things. He um and he listed them in like numerical order. So I'll read them off to you guys, and then just you know you can get. get Comment on the ones that he mean misspelled the your name. Oh, that's okay. Yep, he sure did. <laughs> Number one, he said, and I'm, and I, and I'm, the, pun, and I'm the punch drunk one, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, haven't sparred good since Barboza or Thompson. Number two, only time I find myself in a cage is when I fight. Number three, since pandemic, none of this shit has been fun. Number four, I used to smell a lot more when I was competing. Number five, being so busy taking care of others instead of myself. Number six, it's taken absolutely everything to find myself happy. Number seven, created boundaries between those who are bad for me. Number eight, structure myself so I don't make the same mistakes. Number nine, no, I'm not retiring and fuck those who think I should. Number 10, I have work to do and I'm one pissed off mf -er. Um. Yeah, not sparring is not a good thing. Like, no, he's saying he hasn't sparred good, which means he hasn't had good sparring. He also says in there that he hasn't been in the cage except for when he fights. That's another thing that's not good. Those are all things that you need to have surrounding you. Look, we sparred in a ring when, uh, at AKA in the beginning, and then you start realizing when you spar in a cage how much difference it, how much of a difference it makes, because you, there's nowhere your butt can't scoot out. You can't defend takedowns as easy. You know, it's it's more difficult. It's more difficult to defend the takedowns against the cage as it is against the ropes because now i can just sit on the rope and you can't really get me i can kind of grab the rope a little bit and stop you from taking me down with my elbow armpit whatever all of those things there's things that you have to put yourself into these situations on a daily basis so when you get in there it just comes second to none you just you're it's just muscle memory um you know, the pandemic, you know, none of this shit's been fun since the pandemic. No, you know, like he hasn't won since the pandemic. Yeah, of course it hasn't been. That's fun. the thing is that I've said this. I don't know how many times winning solves everything, solves your problems at home, solves the solves your relationship problems, solves, solves your coach's problems. It solves your mental problems. It solves all that shit. And it's, exactly. it's not easy when you when I lost when I lost two in a row, I had never lost two in a row. I was like, what the hell is going on? It just it just baffled me. It baffled the shit out of me. But then when I lost three and I lost my third one was to him, my mentality was way different, man. I was like, shit, it's time to go. I just lost three fights in a row. You're three like you're thinking to yourself three fights. This guy's lost five or six in a row. Seven. I think six I think it's seven. six, right? It's just it's not. Winning makes you feel like you're unstoppable. And this sport, like every sport, is about confidence. Six. Six. Yeah. And so go back to his list, please. And um, you need that confidence. That confidence is what gets you through to the next fight, which gets you, which get, makes you want to push a little bit harder when you feel like you might be behind on the, on the judges' cards. He doesn't mm -hmm. have that right now. And it's not, I'm not knocking him, man. I, I said this, I, I, I continue to say this. He is, when he started his losing streak, was it Justin, Oliveira, and Benil? Justin Gaethje, was it? Yeah, I mean, like, he was Gaethje, Oliveira, and Benil. He was the same age that I was when he beat me. It's, it's just, it's father time, man. There's nothing, there's nothing I can tell you. There's nothing, I like Tony a lot. Tony's going to probably take, I a, love Tony. Tony's going to take his fence to whatever it is I'm saying. Because he's he's already come out publicly and said things about me too, like oh you're just mad because I beat you, oh, I I pieced you up. You can say what you want, man. Things like that don't bother me. I'm just talking realities. And I had a nice I had a nice long look in the mirror with myself after I lost to him. It was like you need to figure out what you want to do in life because it's coming to an end real quick. I didn't think it was coming to an end. Just went the distance and a split decision lost to Benson Henderson, who was the champ for a long time. You know, was supposed to fight Pettis for the title. Then lost a very narrow split decision loss to Bobby Green, who I shouldn't have lost to. I was out there fucking lollygagging. Then I got destroyed by Tony Ferguson. It was like a mental, it was a mental thing. Like, ah, oh, the other two fights, I came up short. No big deal. This guy can't do anything to me. Fuck, he proved me wrong. There's just a mentality. Just the mentality was different. But then I, I got, I went, I went home. I was like three in a row. You just, you have to take a good hard look at yourself in the mirror and go, this is coming to an end real quick. It's going to come sooner than you think. And if not, if it doesn't come to an end real quick, there's a, there's a whole, and you'll notice it within a couple years of you being retired. 
and I'm doing, I'm saying this directly to Tony is that you're going to notice things in your brain. You're going to notice things in your, the way you talk to people. You're going to notice things in the way you, the way you talk to your wife, the way you talk to your kids, the way you, the way you handle yourself. And you need to have a reality check. I can't even explain it. You have to understand how to reel it in because you're the only one in charge of your mentality and your, and your body language and the words that come out of your mouth that can affect your relationships with everyone. And it's, it's a, I've had these conversations with myself a lot, you know, because there's times where words come out of your mouth and it's, you don't realize it. And so I, I get nervous for him watching him take these L's. So it become, it become a little emotional. It's, it's a, it's a little fucked no. up, but I no, care no, for the no, guy. I care for all. all these fighters. It's the truth. Yeah. And the, and the, it's, it's people have no concept of how lonely it gets. It's lonely. Mm-hmm when it's you know when you're winning josh everyone wants to be around mm-hmm. you everyone wants you know, oh, you know do this do that when you're losing there's still the people that want to be around you and there's still the people that you know are there for you but they just they don't know how to, to communicate and and you know make things better for you so a lot of times they'll hang back because uh, i just i'll just give them this space and the space is basically the last thing you need at this mm-hmm. point with some of them. And it's a matter of, you know, like I said, I love Tony. I've known Tony for a long time. He, he's a hell of a fucking athlete. He's a hell of a fighter. I don't know if he doesn't want to retire. That's okay. I, I understand that. But there comes a point, you know, what are you going to do here? You know, it's, what are you going to do to change this up? Because really now it's come to the point of, you know, they're it's they they've not given him easy opponents in anybody. No, none of them. You know, when you take a look at you know, obviously the Gaethje was for the interim championship uh, to then fight Habib, and so that didn't work out. And then Charles Oliveira becomes the champ. You know, and then he fights Benil, a tough goddamn fighter. He fights Michael Chandler. You know, Nate Diaz, Bobby Green. You know, so. It, who are we going to say is the easiest fight there? Bobby Green? That ain't an easy fight for nobody. Bobby Green is a pain in the ass. So, I, you know, I, I, I sat there before and I thought, based upon pay, the UFC might say, you know, we're going we're gonna to let him go. But they haven't done that. And that's, you know, hats off to him for not doing that and giving him fights. But I think it, it comes down to that. It's, they're not going <clears> to... <throat> this is the same thing that happened with BJ. And, and when, you know, I did BJ's fight against, wasn't his last fight, but it was his fight against Yair Rodriguez. And I did, I'm being honest, you know, I did not want to ref the fight because I knew what was going to happen. And I, I loved BJ as a fighter. I love him as a person. And I knew that this is just a bad fight for him. This kid is too fast, too good now for what BJ is now. And I, and I asked, you know, Sean Shelby, I said, dude, why are you doing that? Why are you fucking putting BJ against this young kid and stuff? I go, you know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. And he goes, yeah, John, I do know what's going to happen. He goes, but he makes a lot of money. And I can't give him somebody that he can just beat because then he just wants another fight and more money. So he's going to have to earn that money. And I was like, yeah, fighting sucks. <laughs> It's just, you know, but he, I, I understood it. I was like, okay, you know, I get it, but man, it just sucks. And, and, and Tony's in that position. He's got to fight people that are good. And I don't think, I don't think he wants to fight anybody that's not good, but he's going to have to figure this out. You know, well, I can, that, that, that whole, that whole thing, that whole rundown, Josh is what? It's 10 years off his life. <laughs> well, it's, and, and it's, it's it's one of those, I don't know what to do. Well, here's the thing, though, John, is the Justin Gaethje fight and the Charles Oliveira fight, those two fights alone, I can and I speak from experience because it happened to me with him. At that age, yeah. the damage he took in that Gaethje fight, oh, it changes you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It changes your body. It changes the way you think. I'm the first one to tell people that all the time. I said, look, you can't crash that car like that. 
you do that a couple of times, it's not the same car. It's not even so much a couple of it times. It doesn't work. It's sometimes just one time. And at the age that yeah, he absolutely. was at, I believe he was 36, 37 at the time of the Gaethje fight. It, it's, uh, you're not the same. And after the Tony fight, I was, I was never the same. <clears throat> I never fought the same after that. I fought more conservative. I didn't, I was, I was always a step behind. Um, I was fighting guys, you know, when I fought Pablo Villaseca, talented young man, 11 and one, I think it was his record, but I mean, he should have never even got to the second round with me, but it was one of those fights. I was more concerned about getting hit by him because he was younger and he had power mm -hmm. and yeah. he was short and stocky and all those things that I kind of were like, man, I get hit by this guy. It could be over. It's, it's just, I dug deep in the Tony Ferguson fight <clears throat> as deep as I fucking could to still be there to finish the fight. I just I never wanted to quit. The, that second round was was brutal. Tough. It was brutal. Tough. And I, I I tell this story. It's in it's probably was one of my most viewed shows um, that I did back before you and I joined. Is um, I was in the back in that for about probably forty five minutes to an hour, shivering in the shower. And the the shower was on hot steam water, and my body was shivering. I couldn't get my I couldn't control myself. I was shivering so much. I'd lost so much blood. My body was in shock, you know, and um, it took me a long time, you know, that night to actually get my body to stop shivering. I'd say it took me probably about two hours, three hours for my body not to shiver. I had sweats on, had sweaters on. We were in San Diego, by the way. The fucking yeah, the we like it was cold, the weather yeah. was nice. Um, it wasn't until I got like probably two or three drinks in me that I, that I, I my body stopped shivering. You know, it's just, you're not the same fighter. I think those fights from the Justin Gaethje and the Charles Oliveira, Benil Dariush, Chandler, the knockout he took against Chandler, like those fights right there. That, that kind of knockout is huge. Yeah. like I mean, it's... I've seen guys in the gym got knocked out very similarly in with shin pads on and with headgear on and all that. And they were never the same ever again, yep. ever again. Um, Look, I'm not saying he should retire. If you don't want to retire, cool. Do what you want. But you've got to look, like I said, you got to take a good look in the mirror and just realize that <clears throat> even at 40 years old, 41 years old, I said this on Rogan's show when I was on there. If you live another 40 years, think about you have a whole other life ahead of you. That's right. What are you going to fucking do? You got to start thinking about that now. Your kid, your yep. kids, like he's got young kids. They're not going to get to college until you're 60. That goes through my mind every single time, John. Like the kids well, won't, your is... kids won't even get to college until you're 60 years old or 58. That money that you made through your career is gone. Yeah. It ain't there. What else are you going to do? You imagine how much money you spent just just to get you where you're at. How much money you're not making the money you're making during that year, those years. After you retire, you're not making any of that. It's going to go oh, no. fast. It's going to go real fast. And so as much as I care and I, I want the best for him and <clears throat> I have no ill will towards Tony, this is the fight game, man. This is the game. I, I admire him a lot for what he's done in his career. He, I think he's yep. chasing. This is my own, this is my own thought, John. He's chasing that fight that never happened against Habib. He thinks it's going to, and I'm not saying he's trying to get the Habib fight. I'm saying that he's chasing that one big fight. He never got it. He was always right there. He never got the one big fight. He never got to fight Connor. He never got to fight Habib. He never got to fight that one, the, the fight. 